if you clicked on this video, you probably use Visual Studio Code. And for good reason. It's one of the best and most widely used text editors out there right now. And it's a really great product for just working on any kind of code. But if you use Visual Studio Code, you probably also think that it's open source. After all, it says right on the homepage, it's built on open source. But that's a little bit misleading. So the code behind it is definitely open source. As you can see in this GitHub, this is all the source code to the application. But the binaries or the applications that you download from this page are not actually open source and they're not under a free Libre open source software license. That's because whenever Microsoft builds this code into an actual application, it stuffs it with a bunch of Microsoft branding and telemetry, which will basically report back to Microsoft a whole bunch of things about what you're doing in your editor. Now, maybe you don't care about this. Oh, I don't care about if Microsoft tracks me while I'm writing my code. What do I have to hide? But if I have the choice between a company tracking me while I use an application and a company not tracking me while I use an application, I'm going to pick the letter 10 times out of 10. Now, what you can do if you don't want to get all the Microsoft telemetry with this is you can build it from source, but if that sounds a little bit hard or difficult for you, you don't have to worry because there's this project called VS Codium, which actually compiles all the code for you, builds it into an application, and they release binaries of it just to download online without Microsoft spying on you. So you can download it from this page right now, or you can use your package manager. It's very easy. I'm on Linux, so I just install it in the AUR. If you're on Arch Linux with yay s vs codium bin. And once you get it installed, it's basically there to use almost exactly like Visual Studio Code. Now, that's not all, otherwise this would be a very short video. There are a few things that you need to know when moving over from VS Code to VS Codium. So first things first, you probably want to take all your settings from Visual Studio Code and put them over to VS Codium. So uh, this is a pretty easy process, but you do need to do it. So on their GitHub, they do have a guide on how to do so. So depending on what system you're using, all of your settings will be in a different folder. But if you're on Linux, then it's going to be under .config in your home directory. And then it's going to be under code if you're in Visual Studio Code. And basically, you just want to copy it over to the VS Codium folder. So your user settings are going to be in the user directory under the settings.json. So you, you'll want to copy the settings.json. And maybe you also have keybindings.json in this folder. You're going to want to copy that to VS Codium folder. And if you want the extensions, that's in a whole other folder entirely. On Linux, at least, it's going to be in your home directory. I believe this is the same for Mac, but uh, it's going to be under .vs code, just like that. So you're going to want to move all the extensions from the .vs code folder inside your home directory to the .vs code dash OSS. So you can probably just so you can actually just rename the folder. And this is where all of your extensions are kept. So this is an easy way to port over all your extensions. Unfortunately, they're not moved over by default whenever you install VS Codium. So yeah, you have to do a bit of work just to set it up. But once you do that, you're pretty much fine. Another thing is that VS Codium doesn't actually d disable every kind of telemetry by default. They do a pretty good job of disabling most of everything and crippling the rest. But let's open up um, VS Codium here. But you can go into the settings here and you can search for at tag uses online services. And basically these are all the settings that are gonna report back to some online service, maybe Microsoft servers or somebody else. So this, so going through this page, there are some things you might wanna uncheck like this, fetches experiments to run from a Microsoft online service. I don't really want to talk into Microsoft online services, so I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, enable natural language search. This is a, so that you can type into the settings bar up here and it'll give you more relevant results. But honestly, I just, I just use the settings.json document to set all my settings, so I don't really need this. 
and you can go through all these. Some of these you don't need to change, like the automatic updates and the extensions auto update. So VS Codium actually, whenever it builds it, it uses a different server than the Microsoft extension server and the Microsoft uh, update server. So these are not actually communicating to Microsoft. I know it says so, but these are actually just uh, reporting back to uh, open source server that VS Codium has. So you don't need to necessarily uncheck all these. But I don't really need them because I update through my package manager, so you can just uncheck this if you really want. I'm probably just going to. I don't want release notes from Microsoft. Some of these are just from other servers like NPM, so I'm not gonna uncheck that. Now, one last thing that might trip you up whenever you're moving over to VS Codium is you might have a problem where some extensions you just can't find in the extension store. So, for example, the other day I was looking for import cost, which is a really nice extension that basically tells you how many kilobytes you're importing into your project when you bring in an external library, but I could not find it on the extension store. And that's because, um, like I said, VS Codium uses a different server from Microsoft's so that they can't use their telemetry. And they use this open source uh, kind of mirror to the Visual Studio extension store called openvsx.org. And this actually has most of the extensions that you'd expect in the normal VS Code store, but it doesn't have any because you do have to manually upload them. So maybe if you author an extension, you can upload it here as well. But some of them, not all of them, are here. So some of them you actually have to go and download yourself. So let's go to import cost in the Visual Studio Marketplace. And we can actually download the VSIX file which is the plugin file. Right over here on the sidebar, there's a download extension button right here. And it'll save it as a .vsix file, which is basically like a zip file for Visual Studio Code extensions. So we have it downloaded right here in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna open up terminal. So you're gonna wanna type in vscodium dash dash install extension, and then the location of the vsix file. So for me, it is download slash Wix. I'm going to install that right here. And then it'll install it in a few seconds. We can pop open Visual Studio Code here and check to see if it is up and running. And as you can see, we now have import cost in here and that'll work fine exactly as it would if you downloaded it from the Microsoft extension store. And finally, if you're working in the terminal and you like uh, using the code shortcut. So this is a pretty nice uh, shell alias that Visual Studio Code installs where you can just type in code and then it'll pop open an instance of Visual Studio Code. So I do think by default VS Codium uses the same code alias right here but in case it doesn't you can go into your shell config file and alias it yourself if for some reason it doesn't work. So you can type in alias uh, code is equal to, let's say, VS Codium. So now every time you type in code, it'll just pop open VS Codium, no problem. But for me, it, it just did that by default, but I've heard some people have problems with that on their own system. So see how that works for you. And that's all there is to it. So now you can use Visual Studio Code without all the Microsoft telemetry and creepiness, which I like having all of my software on my computer free and open source. Just, I don't like reporting back to some company, giving them all my data. So that's how you can do it with Visual Studio Code.